This rocket is carrying a telecommunications satellite, intended for use for the next 15 years. However, it will never make it to orbit. In fact, it won't make it much further than a few hundred feet above the ground. As soon as this rocket takes off, it veers off course and travels horizontally, crashing just 20 seconds later into an inhabited area. That wasn't the end of the story though. Strangely, an investigation would cause international controversy, not due to any shocking revelations. The investigation itself broke defense and military regulations, despite the fact the launch was a commercial venture. Unfortunately, that isn't the only example of shady dealings that surrounds this disaster. <laughs> After the 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, NASA announced they would no longer carry commercial satellite payloads aboard space shuttles, forcing satellite operators to use commercial, expendable launch vehicles. Many companies then looked abroad, where this service could be found for cheaper. One such nation was China. For years, China had been using its Long March series of expendable launch system rockets, and in 1996 were ready to launch the first Long March 3B. On board was Intelsat 708, a telecommunications satellite built by American company Space Systems Loral for multinational satellite services provider Intelsat. Satellite technology was protected by ITAR, International Traffic in Arms Regulations. These are a set of regulations in place in the United States to control the export of defense technologies to prevent them from falling into the hands of adversaries. Launch vehicles, guidance systems, and satellite components were all controlled by ITAR, and as such, Space Systems Loral had to receive licenses from the US Department of State to launch Intelsat satellites on Chinese rockets. Intelsat 708 would be launched aboard a Long March 3B rocket from Zichang Satellite Launch Center in China. Near the gates to the center, about three miles from the launch pad, sits a residential complex intended to house employees, as well as a hotel to accommodate foreign workers, such as the Space Systems Loral employees who will be involved with the Intelsat 708 launch. The aerospace workers share this space with local villagers. On the morning of the 15th of February 1996, Intelsat 708 was due to be launched. All personnel were ordered to go to the satellite preparation building inside the launch center, thus clearing the employee accommodations. As they passed through the main gate, they noticed a lot of locals had gathered there, presumably to watch the launch. There were dozens, maybe hundreds of them. At 3 a.m., Intelsat 708 took off and immediately swerved off course, sending the 400-ton rocket down the valley and towards the main gate from which the workers had just come. In about 20 seconds, it crashed into a hillside. With most of its propellant still on board, the vehicle erupts in a massive explosion. Witnesses recall that the 3 a.m. hillside momentarily resembled day as the explosion lit up the valley. The order for workers to leave the residential area had likely saved their lives, as it was now all destroyed, some buildings entirely flattened by the rocket that had crashed just 200 feet away. Officially, the Chinese state media claimed the incident killed 6 people and injured 57. Supposedly, the crowds of villagers gathered at the gates for the launch had been evacuated in the time between the workers entering the center and the launch, although many workers were skeptical about this. Witnesses at the scene reported the area was quickly flooded with Chinese soldiers, military vehicles, and dozens of ambulances. Also spotted were flatbed trucks, hauling off large, concealed masses, which some suspect were human remains. American estimates suggest the death toll may have been somewhere between 200 and 500 people, which would make it the deadliest space launch accident in history. 
The Chinese investigation determined that the Long March 3B rocket had suffered a failure within the guidance system of the rocket. However, the relevant space launch insurance companies insisted on an independent review of this investigation. As such, engineers from Space Systems Loral and other Western aerospace companies were brought in to take part in the review committee. This committee found that while the original investigation may have been correct, it pointed out that there were two other potential points of failure and suggested tests be performed to prove or disprove each component as the issue. Following this review, the Chinese identified the problem was one of the committee's suggestions rather than their original conclusion. This was the third launch failure in 38 months involving a Long March rocket, and this finding helped the Chinese improve the reliability of the Long March series. They did not experience another failure until 2011. This may sound like a very favourable outcome, but it actually put Space Systems Loral in a lot of trouble. In 1997, the US Defence Technology Security Administration found that the review committee had significantly benefited China in their development of guidance systems. Guidance systems that could be used in satellite launch vehicles, or, for example, ballistic missiles. As previously mentioned, there are regulations controlling the export of these technologies, and because the Space Systems Loral engineers freely shared their findings with Chinese engineers, instead of submitting them for prior governmental review, they had basically performed a defense service in violation of export control regulations. Space Systems Loral paid $20 million in fines and compliance expenses. There is another small twist to the tale. The disputed figure of six fatalities and whether or not there was a cover-up of death on a much larger scale is debatable. However, Western engineers noticed a disturbing detail on return visits to Jichang Satellite Launch Center. The workers' accommodations have been repaired, renovated, reconstructed, but the neighboring village is gone. There is no memorial in its place, and no mention in the media of what happened to it. It simply disappeared, like the villagers the workers had seen gathered at the gates. By the time they came back, they were gone. Vanished. Erased, perhaps.